All right, let's talk now about part two of the single stage completion methods. And this will talk about then accept, and then we'll compare, then apply, and then compose. And you get to see how then compose cleans things up by flattening and denesting completable futures. But first, let's talk about then accept. So you can see then accept takes a consumer. Remember, consumers, consumers are used in several places in Java streams. For example, in splitterators for the try advanced method. It's basically kind of a pass by reference like model that often has side effects. And so what will happen is this consumer's action will be called to handle the results of the previous stage when it completes. And the action that's passed in, this consumer behaves as a callback. You're registering a callback that has some kind of side effect. So hopefully you all know what a callback is and you know what a side effect is which are sometimes good, sometimes bad, depends on various factors. As you can see here, then accept returns a completable future to void, meaning there is no return value that comes back. Now, you do get back a completable future, so you can, you can do things that, like join on it, but you won't get a result back. And we typically use then accept at the end of a chain of completion stages where we want to have some kind of side effect when all is said and done. So it's kind of like, uh, the caboose at the end of a train, right? You think of a train as a chain of cars, and then we have a caboose at the end. By the way, I, I got uh, Dolly 3 to generate that for me. I'm like, generate me a picture of a caboose at the end of a train. So that's what I got. I thought it was pretty nice. All right, so let's take a look at this example. And this is just a continuation of what we talked about before. So as you can see, we have our unreduced big fraction. We have our su supplier that will reduce it. We run this in the background with supply sync. When that's done, we take the reduced but improper big fraction and turn it into a mixed string. And then the last thing we do at the end of this chain as the caboose, we're going to accept it and we're going to pass in a method reference to println. So then accept will be called when then apply finishes, it returns a string, and then, then accept will be called to print the results. And notice that println has a side effect. Namely, it prints the mixed string to the standard output. So that's basically the flow of things. You don't always use then except, but for situations like this, it can come in handy. The downside with using then except, if you get carried away with it, which you should not do, is you can end up with something known as callback hell. And this is a problem that occurs particularly with misuses of JavaScript and their callback-based promises and asynchronous future-based API calls. So uh, don't end up with this kind of nested callback hell. So use then accept very sparingly, typically just at the very end of a chain of completion stages. So now that you've learned about then apply, then compose, and then accept, let's talk about comparing and contrasting then apply and then compose. They have very similar method signatures. If you look at these calls, they look almost identical, the main difference being that this one returns a completion stage. Unlike then apply, however, then compose avoids this unwieldy nesting of completable futures. So this is what things would look like if we used then apply. And you can see very quickly it gets out of control. So the, the, the use case is we're going to reduce a big fraction asynchronously in the background, and when that's done, we're going to call then apply, which is going to asynchronously multiply things in the background. The problem here is that then apply will return a completable future to whatever we're doing, and supply async also returns a completable future. So by using then apply, we'd have to write this type of ugly verbose code that says we have a function with a big fraction and a completable future to a completable future of big fractions. That actually works, believe it or not, but who wants to look at ugly code like that? Ugh, terrible. So much better way to do it is to use then compose. And as you can see, then compose will denest or flatten the results so we don't have a completable future to a completable future. We just have a completable future. So that's what then compose does. Very nice way to do things. Here's another little thing to be aware of, and this is even more cool, and you will definitely get a chance to use this in several places in your assignment number four. You can use then apply async to replace nestings of then compose 
and supply async. So notice over here, we used then compose and supply async to asynchronously do the multiplication in the background. And that worked because we, we denested things, which was nice. However, an even cleaner way to do that kind of a use case is to use then apply async, which will take this action, which is going to multiply the reduced big fraction by some value, some constant, and do that in the background. And so now we're OK. Now we don't have to worry about denesting of anything because this is going to run asynchronously, but it returns a value which is then wrapped in a completable future. So this is nice and simple again. So really cool, really helpful to understand these different patterns and use cases. You can also, whoops, this should be then compose, not then com compose. You can also use then compose to avoid calling join when flattening nested completable futures. And this is, this is a rather esoteric use case, but I've come across some situations where it helped sometimes. So here's an example. We're going to call supply async, which will asynchronously run a long-running method that itself returns a completable future. And that would then lead to a completable future to a completable future. What you can do then, if you so desire, is use then compose to give the function identity, and that will then make sure it comes back as a completable future to integer as opposed to a completable future to a completable future to integer. So that's one way to do this. So this flattens things so there's just one completable future. Uh, another way to do this, which is arguably better, <laughs> is to use then compose a sync. And in this case, what will happen, this, this call will run in the same thread that this background thread run. But if you have a different computation that will also run in the background and return a completable future, you can use then compose async, which will denest things just like then compose does, but it runs the behavior or the action also in some other thread in the common fork join pool in this case. You will also get a chance to use then compose async for programming assignment four. So being aware of this stuff will help you organize the code accordingly. And that's the end of part two. By the way, for people who came in late, 